Here are five steps to improve your audio only using tools built into Premiere Pro. Plus, I have a pro tip that will help you find music for your videos fast that you don't wanna miss. Let's jump into step number one. Before we jump into Premiere, we wanna make sure that our actual audio recording is the best it can be. Now, everybody has different setups. You may be on the go in a loud environment. You may be in a more controlled environment like myself, but don't worry, I'm gonna offer tips for many different environments. Normally, I have two mics recording at the same time, and I recommend you do this too, just in case one of them fails. So I have the Rode NT-USB Mini that's recording directly into my computer right now, and I also have this Hollyland large Mark II. It actually just looks like a little pin. It's super tiny here. So with the Hollyland, it's connected directly into my camera, synced with the picture. So this is actually preferred because you don't have to synchronize later in post. So if you're just starting out, getting a lav mic like this or a boom microphone might be the way to go. The reason I choose my Rode mic instead of the Hollyland for my main audio is because I like the sound. Here's the sound of the lav mic. And now we're back to the Rode mic. But the Hollyland Lark 2 still sounds great and that's why I have it as my backup in case my Rode microphone, something strange happens. I know sometimes when I'm screen recording, something will happen and it disconnects. So it's always good to have a backup plan. If you're really just starting out and you can't afford a microphone, you can just use the built-in mic on your camera or use a voice memo app, which I'm doing right now on my iPhone. And I'll show you this cool new trick inside of Premiere Pro that you can use AI to enhance this audio to make it sound even better. Before we go into editing, one thing we need to talk about that's often overlooked is mic placement. So the closer your mic is to your mouth where you're speaking, you're gonna get more of a podcasty sound because the closer you are, it can just sound more present. And fun fact, singing close to the microphone is what Billie Eilish does to create that kind of intimate sound, kind of like she's whispering in your ear. Think you're really tough guy, talk it really. <laughs> even know the lyrics. But if you want a more natural sound, just a little bit of distance is just fine. Mine is almost at the podcast level right now, but I can lower and reposition this thanks to the arm that I have. So you can play with your mic placement to see what sort of effect you want. I always like it when it's a bit closer. So now that we have our desired mic placement, the next thing that's the most important is adjusting your microphone's gain, which is essentially how loud the volume output will be. So you can do this a few different ways depending on the mic. Microphone. If you're using the Rode microphone, I just go into my computer settings and change the input of my microphone to make sure it's not too hot. With the Hollyland lav mic, there's an actual dial control that you can adjust. I have mine at level three because I don't have a super loud voice. It obviously depends on the person too, but you can also go into your camera settings and adjust the input level as well. So when we're setting up and doing a test recording, we want the normal speaking voice to be between minus six and minus 12 decibels. So that way there's a little bit of room if somebody raises their voice because you don't want it to get above minus zero decibels, right? Because that's when it starts to clip. Basically, don't let it get into the red or else it's gonna sound like this. That was aggressive, I'm very sorry. All right, so enough with the mic recording. Now let's jump into Premiere Pro to make the voice sound even better. So here in Premiere Pro, I've imported my footage and all my mics. So let's drag everything down here to the timeline. A good way to sync my talking head with audio is to highlight both of them with your mouse, right click and then synchronize and choose the audio option. Premiere Pro will listen to all the audio tracks and line them up exactly. Now, if this process takes too long or it just doesn't work out, you can also line them up manually using the waveforms. And a quick shortcut is pressing Option or Alt on a Windows, and you can use those bracket keys to shift over the clip one frame at a time. If you don't see the audio waveforms, you can go to your timeline display settings and make sure they're turned on. So let's start with the phone microphone with the voice memo, since this is the most accessible option. And by the way, I'm Kelsey. I'm the creator of Premiere Gal. If this video is helping you out so far, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you've ever used Premiere Pro before, you better subscribe. So how can we make this sound better? Let's go up to window and open up a central sound panel. With the phone audio selected, I'm going to tag it as dialogue. And right now up at the top, I can hit this enhance button and Premiere Pro will use AI to make this phone microphone sound so much better. 
And by the way, I'm Kelsey. I'm the creator of Premiere Gal. If this video is helping you out so far, be sure to give it a thumbs up. For sure, this new feature has been a game changer for a lot of people. I can now lower this mix amount to make it sound a little bit more natural if I need to. And by the way, I'm Kelsey. I'm the creator of Premiere Gal. If this video is helping you out so far, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you've ever used Premiere Pro before, you better subscribe. And below that, there's a bunch of repair tools that can help you get rid of background noise, for example. But overall, if you don't have a good microphone or you have some pretty bad echo, try the enhance audio feature first because that might be all you need to do. So now let's move on to the main microphone. And if you've ever used Premiere Pro before, you better subscribe. So as you can hear, it already sounds pretty good. So we don't need to use the enhance AI feature. But what I am gonna show you is one of the most important tools behind professional recordings, and it's called the compressor. So even though this microphone sounds pretty good, in any setting, somebody might be talking super loud and then super quiet, and the compressor helps balance it all out. And since we don't really know what the listening environment is of the viewer, it's good to make sure that it sounds nice and clear. So that's why it's good to balance it. So you can see here that there are many compressors built into Premiere Pro, but let's use the tube model compressor because it's easy to visualize what is going on. Under the compressor and effect controls, let's hit the edit button. For starters, the parameters that matter the most are the top three ones starting from threshold. So this is the point where if the volume of the sound gets too loud, the compressor will start doing its thing. Jumping over to ratio here, this dictates how much the compressor compresses if the audio gets past the threshold. So let's set this to four here because one means it won't really do anything. So now I'm going to hit play and start lowering the threshold. So now you can see the volume getting pushed down by the compressor. So I personally like to preserve some of the natural dynamics in my voice so I won't go too hard. Now, usually I don't want the volume to be pushed down more than six decibels. And if you've ever used Premiere Pro before, you better subscribe. And if you've ever used Premiere Pro before, you better subscribe. So this sounds good to me. Of course, this is a personal preference so make sure you listen and be the judge so now that everything is more balanced volume wise here we can make the whole thing louder by bumping up this output gain. Now that my voice sounds good, this is where it's time to find some great music to go along with it. And for that, I go straight to Musicbed. The reason I switched to Musicbed is because they prioritize top quality music by real artists, often which you'll find on Spotify Discover Weekly or Apple Music. Just take a listen to some of them. I just feel like the songs excite me for the edit. Like, it's just so exciting. Like when I hear the music, I'm like, okay, the edit is set. And they recently introduced a new AI feature called Search by Song. This is where you can type in the name of any popular song you know, and Musicbed will find hundreds of similar songs from their library that you can license for any of your video projects. I'm here to stay. So being able to find music that matches the vibe of our story is super important because it can help guide shifts or transitions in your video edits. For example, here at around 40 seconds in this video, we had an upbeat track, hopefully how they might help you in your creative process. So the challenge for me is to create a 30 second commercial, but to help transition to the next section, introducing the challenge, a new song did the trick. So music can play a crucial role in helping divide up your edit and help guide the story along the way. And the best part is I can use any of these songs without worrying about claims on my YouTube videos because of their sync ID system. So let's download some tracks. So I like this one, so let's license it. And here I can put in where I'll be using this music so Musicbed can make sure that my video will not be claimed. So if you'd like to check out Musicbed's awesome catalog for your own filmmaking needs and support the Premiere Gal channel, make the switch to Musicbed. You can use my link in the description to sign up for a 14 day free trial and thanks so much to Musicbed for sponsoring today's video. So back in Premiere Pro, I've imported the song that I just downloaded from Musicbed and let's check out some good ways that we can balance the music with the voice. So the most obvious way is just to drag down this volume line on the music track just to lower the volume. And I like to bring it down between minus 20 and minus 30 decibels, depending on the song. Creator Premiere Gal, if this video is helping you out so far, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And the goal here is just to make sure the music doesn't overpower 
what I'm saying. So you can still hear what I'm saying, but the voice still needs to be front and center. Of course, this depends on what type of video that you're making. If you don't have a voice at all and the music is present, then you want the music to be at the forefront. For example, all the promos that I create for my gal toolkit, there is no voice and the music is front and center. But if you're doing a talking head video like myself, you probably want to try out the ducking. In Essential Sound here, you can tag the song as music, and here I can enable ducking. And since I already have my mic tagged as dialogue, which we did earlier, if you didn't do that, remember to do that first, and here I can choose to have the music duck against the dialogue. And this means that every time I speak, the music will get lower. And every time I stop talking, the music will get higher. And here there's a few more controls. I can choose how sensitive it is. I can choose how many decibels in reduction the music will get when I speak. I can also choose how fast the ducking comes in. The settings we chose here should be good. So let's hit generate keyframes. And almost instantaneously, you'll see here that in the music track, there are a bunch of keyframes that were automatically applied. And of course you can go in afterwards and manually adjust these points just by moving them. With some background music, however, lowering the volume just isn't enough. For example, some music might have some high frequencies such as hi-hat or brass elements, and you wanna lower those down so they don't you know, interfere with the voice as much. And this is where the EQ can come in handy. In Premiere, I like to use parametric equalizer. An equalizer is just long form of EQ. And let's apply this to our music track. Under effect controls, let's hit edit. And here's where you can see the whole frequency spectrum of your audio. With the left side being the lows and the right being the highs, I can get rid of all the highs by using the low pass filter. Now, if you cut out the highs in the music, it'll start to sound like what you hear if you stand, for example, in a club's bathroom. So I think this is a little bit too much. So let's turn off LP. I can also pick one of these handles and pull down to cut out a specific area of the frequencies. A good tip here is to bring one of these handles down and slide them back and forth to find which part is competing with your dialogue. Normally it would be around 1K to 10K. And if you've ever used Premiere Pro before, you better subscribe, you better subscribe. Thanks. This is a good spot. So cutting out some of the high frequencies here just helps my voice shine more. Be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you've ever used Premiere Pro before, you better subscribe. So now it's time to add the sound effects. And the most crucial advice I can give when it comes to sound effects is to add them with purpose. It might be to give attention to some motion graphics or to put emphasis on a particular movement. Having too many sound effects can get really annoying real quick, unless that's what you're going for. I know my editor from Thailand, Jiva, told me that it's actually very popular on Asian channels to have sound effects going throughout. So it really depends on your audience. So after adding in the necessary sound effects here in the timeline, you can see that most sound effects are pretty loud by default. And by the way, I'm Kelsey. So I'm going to go in and turn it down. And by the way, I'm Kelsey. I want it to be loud enough so you can hear it, but not louder than my voice. I can also use the help of the EQ again to get rid of any high frequencies and any sound effects that are annoying or make it more difficult for my voice to be heard by the viewer. But for the most part, I find just suggesting the volume is enough for sound effects. Another thing I can do is panning from the left to the right to make it more interesting. Of course, this is better for people that have stereo speakers or headphones on. For example, I have this lower third popping up from the left and I can select the sound effects and under effect controls, I can pan the sound to the left. And by the way, I'm Kelsey. I also have this graphics flying across the screen and instead of just having the sound effects in the middle, I can go to the little effects icon in front of the audio clip here, right click and choose pan. This line is now controlling the pan amount. I can hold control or command and click on the lines to add keyframes if you've ever used Premiere Pro before. So panning can not only make your video more interesting, but it can also give more space to your voice, which is always in the middle. So when we're close to finishing a video, there's always two things that we do. The first thing that we do is add a very short crossfade at all the little dialogue cut points and music. So that way you don't get any like abrupt clicks 
between those clips as you play it back. And remember the fade can't be too long because then it will start to blend together and you might hear some voices from before and after, which you don't want. So instead, what I wanna do is go to Premiere Preferences here, Timeline, and change the audio transition default to only two frames. And then I can go back out and select all the tracks I wanna apply the fade to and hit Shift D to add crossfades on all the cuts. The second thing I always do is go to the audio track mixer panel right here. In this panel, I'm going to click this little arrow on the top left to expand all the effect slots. If you don't see this here, you can always go to window and open up the audio track mixer. Now, all these vertical tracks here are the same as the audio tracks that you have in your timeline. So if you add an effect to this first vertical, for example, all my dialogue on audio track one will be affected by the effect we add here. But instead of doing that, we're actually going to go to the last track on the right called Mix. And this is kind of like your master track that affects all of the other tracks. So I'm just going to hit this little drop down arrow and add in a hard limiter. And basically the limiter's main purpose is to prevent the audio from clipping. So I can double click on the effect to get all the options, but normally I don't really touch anything other than adding some input boost if the whole video is just a little too quiet. So now you know all of our tricks to making our audio sound good and I hope it's applicable to your own workflow and hopefully you walk away with something that can improve your own audio workflow. If you want any other different types of audio tips or tricks, be sure to leave a comment below and if this helped you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And other than that, don't forget to check out Musicbed's new AI feature, the search by song. It's definitely something you don't wanna miss out on. And as always, stay creative and keep creating better video with a gal. See you next time. Bye. Ooh.